just wrapping up the GNE 2024 event in Dallas, Texas. What what are some of the key takeaways for you, Roy? Um, I thought you know, well, NAS certainly it was one of the key takeaways. But I think you know what what I learned at the event was that it's the workloads have changed, and AI and Gen AI and the whole hype thing actually does has ramifications for for the carriers. And so within the middle mile. I'm seeing AI workloads drive a lot of interest, a lot of changes in the way that the carriers are, are modifying the offerings. And so building out new data centers, new data centers and new locations that are you know, not, not necessarily in the usual routes. Um, and then the desire to have larger bandwidth, you know, being able to do sort of uh, wave services between sites just because they think that they have a large training amount of data to, to move around. I think that I'm seeing that. But the reality is that I think we don't really know and so if you talk to the carriers, the carriers are saying, so some of the carriers, I mean, I mean, Merkel will speak for himself, but some of the carriers are saying, we don't actually know, but we're trying to get ready and trying to be dynamic and agile. But we do know that we have to build a capacity and the reach for the new set of data centers that are coming online. And I think that's the reality, that AI is driving a new level of investment in data centers, and the fiber has to sort of go along with it, at least in the middle mile is what I'm seeing. So that, that was some of the key takeaways I got. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't agree that uh, we're not uh, yet uh, yeah. clear what the use cases will be, but I think there are some that are maybe, maybe more uh, mature than others. Uh, so we actually see definitely what's happening in the training level for AI. So it's between data centers and in, uh, in, uh, in clouds. So that drives uh, an opportunity for us to build multi-cloud type of capabilities, better multi-cloud type of capabilities that are more suitable for this type of uh, activity, high bandwidth, uh, more flexibility. But we do expect to see inference moving more at the edge uh, due to latency reasons, uh, due to uh, data privacy reasons, uh, and due to basically uh, use cases that would require applications to be in proximity. So that's another opportunity, but that's maybe less, uh, less clear. Overall, the event has been awesome. Um, significant progress by everybody in the carrier community to create uh, the NAS Federation capabilities. So we've made a number of steps ahead and there is significant momentum and enthusiasm behind uh, the initiative. So that's it's been really, really evident. Third point, uh, uh, enterprises participating to the MEF GE event has been a massive uh, uh, positive uh, uh, addition to, to the usual participants. We got uh, uh, and 14 uh, different uh, companies, large companies with multinational corporate uh, capabilities uh, and coverage uh, that came and talked about uh, the, what the requirements are and uh, basically uh, validated uh, or corrected us whenever it was necessary uh, our beliefs about how do we should we serve them. So that's definitely a, a good uh, uh, addition to the, to the MEF activities. How is AI playing out in the the NAS space and in for the MEF and the MEF agenda? We have a, um, an activity which is uh, in the beginning, so we're actually defining uh, how the requirements are. Again, getting back to how we entirely clear what uh, is uh, the, the, the goal, what do we actually need to build. Uh, there are some clearer use cases, uh, so creating a proper, flexible, uh, dynamic, uh, multi cloud capabilities that can connect. Uh, uh, a number of endpoints, whether it's clouds, data centers, edge locations, uh, enterprise locations. Uh, what we know is that data is scattered all over the place. Uh, to train algorithms, you need to bring them, bring, bring the data to the actual models uh, first. Uh, so, and then that's train, retrain, uh, reinforcement, learning. Uh, so that's definitely data flows that we see happening. Uh, and that's one of the, the initial requirements we are clear about. And then the second part is, uh, as I said, uh, how do we handle inference? Today is primarily being dealt with uh, in central locations, clouds and data centers. And is it going to move to the edge? We think that's going to be the case. We're going to have more clusters uh, of uh, GPUs uh, that will uh, do the job of uh, predicting uh, and uh, uh, generating uh, uh, inference for, for customers. I, I would agree. I think, you know, in terms of what I'm seeing is I think it's good that carriers acknowledge this early, but agility, flexibility, and multiple location, I think those are things we know for sure, right? The patterns, the, the actual way that we're gonna do the model training and the inferencing, I think that's a little less clear. But once you have the agility, and once you, you have the capacity and the reach, I think that that's really, really important. And the data centers are gonna go where the power is. It's like, you know, I think as we say in our carrier report that we're desperately seeking power is what we're trying to do because, you know, it's. 
it, you know, you get to find power for all those GPUs that eat a lot of power. Well, once you build a data center, you've got to get connectivity to it. And a lot of people are saying, look, I, I need diversity of routes to that data center. You know, I, I quad diversity or whatever it is. It's not two is not enough, right? So I think we're going to see a lot more fiber bills, flexibility, and the, the carriers who give you that flexibility, that reach, that partnership, because, you know, one carrier can't do it all. I think that's, that's what we're going to expect to see in the near future. The other thing I did, I did learn is that, you know, that, you know, before I was like, hey, look, a lot of chat GPT stuff is not latency sensitive, and it's true. But I was reminded by some of the carriers here that, you know, look, there's multimodality, and there's voice services, and all these other different services. So there may be interesting services that require lower latency and may not be on device. And so, you know, as, as we look forward, there may be workloads that do require, you know, near edge or, you know, sort of near real-time responses for multimodal, multimodal uh, inferencing. And, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's true. We don't know what we don't know yet, right? And so we got to be pre prepared, and that's what I'm seeing. The carriers are getting prepared for that. So just reinforcing what you said there, Roy, um, in terms of the resiliency for, for PATH, there is some interesting new, new use cases for NAS. We have started to develop, and we discussed at the event, the ability for us to route traffic through specific locations, uh, for instance, to avoid a specific, uh, um, I don't know, for geopolitical reasons, specific countries, specific cities, uh, or uh, as another example, uh, route traffic through specific uh, uh, locations to create uh, the, the greenest possible path for ESG reasons. So that's kind of capability that comes from the network and it can be exposed quite nicely on NAS. So that's definitely something, something new to add. And finally, uh, Marco, tell us about uh, the awards, the goals. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we won six awards for NAS and SD1. So uh, testament to our uh, long-term investment into these capabilities and our presence in, in the MEF activities. We built uh, Colt on Demand, the NAS part from eight years ago, nine years ago almost. Uh, so it's been a long-standing uh, development activities and uh, quite proud for the, for the work the team has done. So Chet and also on the back. Uh, he is one of the key architects that have been working on that. Excellent. And actually, Roy also won an award. Uh, Roy, uh, Roy yeah, wants the Michael Howard uh, Distinguished Award. Michael was a good friend to all of us. Yeah, so. he was. He was. Michael Howard was. I think he was a role model. He was a giant in the analyst space, and he was always nice to everyone. So he is someone to look up to and someone to emulate for sure. So for sure. And then let's get Chetan saying some stuff. Go ahead. I think I'll just say I'll agree with both my uh, both Mirko and Roy. Uh, I think definitely AI will take in, lead into different traffic patterns, and NAS will be quite fundamental for that. You know, from a perspective of federation, from a perspective of the customer experience, and also the commercial models out there. So, pretty much, I think we are pretty much on the on the or we are pretty much paying the path for the future from a perspective of AI. All right, fantastic. Well, great show, gentlemen, and happy travels back home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.